Hi, Peter Charles here, Folk to Fly, Fly Fishing. And if you've seen some of my recent videos, I have been concentrating on trying to improve hookup rates with uh, steelhead flies that are long. When you have a long fly, there's a tendency for the uh, steelhead to grab the wing or the tail and miss the hook if you've tied that long fly on a short hook, which was what happened to me in a recent video and has happened to me for years. Now, one particular fly that hasn't had that big a problem has been my brown trout weemer. They intend to inhale that fly rather than nip at the, the wing, but I still get some nippers and I miss fish as a consequence. I've also improved that pattern to reduce the chance of fouling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to incorporate two elements into this particular video where I'm going to make an improved brown trout weemer tube fly that puts the hook to the back but still retains the essence of the brown trout weemer to ensure that it still retains its fish catching ability. So let's get started in looking at the materials. My tube is a two inch aluminum tube. It's 3 seconds in diameter, outside diameter. And I've got a half inch piece of copper at the front to keep the nose down. If you don't weight the nose, there's a tendency for the thing to ride like that. So uh, in thread, I'm just using this brown, old brown Danville, any medium brown in a six aught or a three aught will do. Don't need to get fancy with the thread. The tag is a size 12 uh, uni mylar, gold silver. The body is white uni yarn. The hackling is white marabou. The flash is gold flashaboo. Now we're gonna use some uh, natural white bucktail. We're gonna use the brown side. We're gonna use that to stop fouling. The wing is Icelandic sheep in this sort of, it's kind of a ginger color. The topping for the wing is peacock curl. We're gonna use some gold stick on eyes. And we're going to cover those eyes with this Danville uh, monofilament ultrafine. It keeps the eyes from coming off. So let's get started. Okay, we tie on our mylar first, and we're, we're tying it right at the front, you'll see. And I'm keeping all the material on top. And you'll see I'll do that with all of the material, the tags go on top. Uh, I've got a video on why that works and why it's important with tube flies. You notice I'm using wide turns in the thread. I'm not trying to make them touching turns. I want that ridging that this will produce to help me keep the junction tube on. Pull it nice and tight to uh, make those ridges. Okay. And I'm just gonna bring it up on top. Don't have to worry about that being neat, it's all gonna get covered up. So now for our white yarn. Now this particular version is gonna result in a, a longer white body, that's not a big problem but I can't put my marabou hackling right at the back though, because it just will not palmer properly. You just don't have enough feather. So I'm gonna start right at the back here with my white yarn, pulling tight, because there's a bit of a bump there, then backing off the tension. And if you find yourself not getting the touching turns, you know, back up, try again. Okay, we're going to stop there for a moment. We're going to bring our thread back. And I'm just going to put one wrap in there behind the um, yarn so it stays put. Now we tie in 
our marabou by the tip and you'll notice I've trimmed off one side. This is the thing about this fly, you do not want a super heavy hackling. It has to be sparse. Now sweep that back, see if you can get it into your material holder so it doesn't interfere with the yarn as we wind forward. You can build a little bit of a ramp in there if you want to move it up onto the copper. And we'll stop it out there. Trap it in place. Now we're going to palmer this forward. It's the body is thick, so palmer it in uh, wide turns. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. I got a few strays in there. I'll just try to get them out. What's going to happen is you won't have enough marabou to finish off the uh, the palmering if you don't leave yourself enough room. Now you see what I, in here I'm finishing a little short, so I'm going to back up. I'm going to increase my angle, come forward again, because so I want a full turn at the end. There we go. Got my full turn. One of the reasons why I'm, I'm stressing that full turn is that if you don't have a full turn with a marabou, uh, you will have a lot of marabou on one side of the fly, and that will result in some problems. You're going to end up with uh, the fly starting to go on its side because one side's bulky and one side isn't. So you want a relatively even application. Now I'm just going to smooth that down. Okay, now for the flashaboo, and go lightly with this. Two or three strands is enough. This isn't, you don't want it being a blaring uh, flash. It's supposed to be subtle. Everything about this fly is supposed to be subtle. I'm only using three strands here. I don't want uh, this to be overdone. Two or three strands are enough. Put it on top, lock it in and just put that on your holder to keep it out of the way. Now we're going to put on the bucktail and the purpose for this is just to stiffen the underside to prevent the wing from curling around the tube. It's less likely to happen with the tube version. The hook version has more of a problem with this, but I like to put it in anyway. It gives a little bit of a more of a profile to the head as well. And make it about the length of the tube. There's a pinch loop to put it into place. Now at the back, just put some soft wraps at the back. And what that does is it, it keeps it from flaring out. And at the front, you can tighten it down. And then I will just come in with my scissors here and just trim this off at an angle. And then we get a little bit of a ramp there. So it gives us a, a, a nice profile to the head of the fly. Here we go. The next bit is the Icelandic sheep. This stuff, um, it can be a bit of a problem sometimes to get a really nice piece because this stuff has, you know, nice hairs and this particular clump is starting to get really picked over. I am about to retire this one. So that'll be good. I'll trim that off here. Now we've got a few really long strands. I'll, I don't cut them. When I have a long strand, I pull them out. I don't cut them. If you cut them, you end up with this very uh, blunt end, a ragged end, and it just doesn't flow nicely. Now there's a natural curve to this, so try to utilize the natural curve. 
And I, I use this, my material keeper that's just out, out of the camera range here, as the marking point for the end of the wing. And again, a pinch loop, hold it in place. Hold it up an angle, trim it off. Soft wraps at the back. Tighten up as you come forward. Move it around to keep it on top. Okay, now what we can do here is we just finish this up. Part of the thing we want to do is make this head fairly bulky because we have to put some stick on eyes on here. And so it doesn't hurt to bulk up the head a little bit. So you've got room for the eyes. Now, after you've cleaned that up, bring your thread to the back again. And we put in the last piece here, the peacock curl. Two strands is enough. Make them the length of the wing. Pinch loop them in place. Again, soft wraps at the back. Then come forward, trim them off at an angle. Now you can see the peacock curl tends to leave bits sticking up. So what I will do is I'll very carefully cover those. I don't want those bits sticking up. That looks pretty good. I think I'm going to put a, a couple of more wraps at the back. Bring that to the back here. And now we're going to do soft wraps here. What that helps to do is it flattens the wing, which is what we want with this pattern. If the wing kicks up at an angle, it tends to cause the nose to pitch up and the tail to drop. So the flatter you can make it, the better it swims. Okay, bring your thread forward so we can whip finish. We don't need the brown anymore. Now get the mylar stick on eyes and we're going to come in with the bodkin and pick them off. Very easy to position when you use the bodkin. Use just your fingers, it uh, can be fiddling. Now these mylar eyes don't have enough stick in them to really grip the head, which is the reason why I now use this Danville Ultra Fine Mono. This stuff breaks easy, so be easy and gentle when you're putting it on. But it's ideal for covering these eyes. Put a couple of wide turns in there to get them to bend over and fit into place. Then just bring it back. Now you can whip finish. Okay, now for the head cement, we're going to use a little bit of UV glue at first. Now some top coat. And the top coat prevents the uh, UV glue from getting milky and discoloring over time is designed to cover nail polish and decorative that decorative nail polish that women like to have on the nails which I believe is also UV glue of, of, of one sort or another. There we go. Okay there's our improved brown trout weemer. It has the stiffening under the wing to keep it from flopping around under the tube. The tube is extended to put the hook further back 
It's a slimmer design uh, than some of the tubes I've done in the past for this particular fly. So it fits very, very well. The profile is excellent in the water. It really does look like a bait fish when it comes through the water. And it's one of the reasons why it's, a, it's the fly that I've designed that works the best. Of all my fly designs, this one is the one that catches everything. If it eats a minnow, it'll eat this thing. So give it a try, the improved brown trout weemer tube version. Cheers.